these are these problems worked out for the take-home test for polynomial equations and factoring. Uh, please put any notes on this sheet um, that you would like. Obviously, I would think if you tried each problem first and then double check the answers, uh, make sure you're doing it correctly. If you're just copying them down, that's not the most effective way of doing this. Let's jump right in and see how we do. All right, the first problem, we can go ahead and drop both sets of parentheses because we're just adding them right now. So I don't have to change any signs. And then let me make that more of an exponent. Uh, plus 7x minus 4. Okay, we're going to start combining like terms. So we have an x to the third here. We have an x to the third here. They're both positive, so combine them together. So you get 9x squared, or to the third, excuse me. And then my x squareds, they look like they cancel each other out. There's none, no others. And then I have a singleton x, so plus 7x. And then I have 5 minus 4, which is positive 1. This next problem, we can drop the first set of parentheses, no problems. But the second set of parentheses, you want to make sure you distribute the negative to each of the numbers or each of the terms. And now you can go ahead and combine like terms. So I have 3x to the third minus x squared is 2x squared. And I have 18x plus 6x, that's 24x. And then I have negative 4 and positive 10, so I have positive 6. And there's your answer. Problem number three, we're going to distribute over the parentheses. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. x to the second times x to the third. Remember, you add the exponents, so it becomes x to the fifth. So add those exponents. Okay, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. x to the second, x to the second. Remember, when we're multiplying, you add the exponents, x to the fourth. And then negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And there's a 1 right there, so that gives you x to the third. We're all done. Number 4, we're just going to double distribute. So multiply x here and here. So that's going to give me uh, 2x squared plus 4x minus 10x and minus 20. These are like terms, so we can combine them together. They have the same exponents, both to the first. So that's minus 6x minus 20. This one, if you see the quick way to do it, it's fine, but multiply x times x to get x squared, x times 6, get positive 6x, negative 6 times x is negative 6x, negative 6 times that is negative 36. The middle terms cancel each other out, so I wind up with x squared minus 36. That's one of those difference of two squares. For problem number 6, let's think about what's the largest number that goes into 12 and 16. Some of you might say 2, but there's something bigger, 4. So 4 goes into both, and that leaves me a 3x minus 4. So that's our answer. For problem number 7, the only thing I could factor out of both is going to be a 4. So that's going to give, leave me 2x squared. And for a placeholder, I have to put a plus 1 there, and that's our answer. For problem number 8, looks like I can factor a 2 out of both. And this is x, x, and x, while this is x, x, so I can factor out x squared from both. That leaves me x minus 5, and that's going to be my answer. All right, now we're going to factor the trinomials. Remember, there's one out front, multiply, so I'm going to get positive 40. In order to get a positive, both signs have to be positive. Looks like everything there is positive, so I have positive, positive. And... I think you might be able to see this. I think you could say that 10 and 14. There's certainly other ones, but 10 and 14 are both going to add up to the 14x. So make sure you have a positive with both of those and an x. So x squared plus 10x plus 4x plus 40. Like terms there would be an x, so that leaves me x plus 10. The middle sign comes down. Factor of 4 out of both of those, and that leaves me x plus 10. So those are the same, so that's our first part of the answer. And whatever we have left, x plus 4. That's your answer. Oops, I don't know what that plus 4. That's my answer. Okay, we're going to put a 1 out front, multiply those. So I'm going to get negative 80. In order to get a negative number 1 multiplying, you have, one, have to have one of each. And we want the two that are 
two factors that are only two away from each other. So one and one eighty, or one and eighty, nope. Two and forty, nope. Four and ten, we could maybe start with. Uh, five and sixteen. Uh, six doesn't work. Seven doesn't work. Eight and ten works. Eight and ten are what's going to work for us. So we're going to have to have a negative ten and a positive eight. And make sure you have the x's that you include. Whatever order you want, as long as you keep the signs, you should be fine. So plus 8x minus 10x minus 80. Factor an x out, so I get to me x plus 8. Middle sign comes down. I can factor a 10 out of both of those. The signs change now. So those are the same. So I'm going to have x plus 8. And whatever I've left, x minus 10 goes in the other parentheses. And we're all done. Problem 11, make sure you put a 1 out front. 45 times 1 is positive 45. Both signs need to be negative here because I have a negative right there. Okay, So I want the two factors of 45 that would add up to 14. Hey, would 5 and 9 work? Of course, I could do 1 and 45 and 3 and 15. But uh, 5 and 9 would both work. If they're both negative, do they both add up to 14x? They sure do. So whatever order you want, make sure you hold the signs with it. Factor out an x, that gives me x minus 5. Middle sign comes down, factor out a 9. The signs change on both of these. So the x minus 5s are the same. And then whatever you have left, x minus 9 is right here. All done. Have you been writing down any extra notes on those? You can always review this video, okay? So you can back up, you can pause it, make sure you're doing these right, you feel comfortable, because you will be tested on this. All right, next problem, I'm going to multiply those together, so I'm going to get positive 10. In order to get a positive number, both signs have to be the same. They'll both be positive in this case. So what factors of 10 would add up to 7? Well, try 2 and 5. Yes, you have 1 and 10 as well, but that gives you 11. So positive 2x and positive 5x. So I'm going to get 5x squared plus 2x plus 5x. You're going to put those in whatever order you want. Looks like I can factor an x out of both those, and it leaves me 5x plus 2. Middle sign comes down. The only thing I can factor out is a 1. Don't forget to factor that 1 out. Those are the same, so I'm going to get 5x plus 2. And whatever I've left, x plus 1, that's my answer. Next one, it looks like I can factor a 2 out of everything first. So that's what you definitely want to do first. Hey, why am I not solving these all the way down? We don't have an equal sign, so you don't solve it. So on this one, I'm going to bring the 2 straight down. That's going to be part of my answer. So we're going to go ahead and multiply in, the, in here. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So one's positive, one's negative, and one and four. If one's positive and one negative, can I get to that negative three? I sure can. So I have a negative four x and a positive one x. I could have put up whatever order I wanted to. Now I'm going to go four x squared minus four x plus one x minus one. I can factor a four x out of both of those. That's going to leave me x minus one. And then the only thing I factor out here is a positive 1, and that leaves me an x minus 1. So I have x minus 1 that goes here, and whatever I have left goes here. So this entire thing, don't forget that 2. Remember you brought that down. So make a note. Be sure that's there. Okay, it's part of your answer. That was the greatest common factor. Problem number 14, nothing to factor out, so I'm going to multiply those. So I'm going to get positive 8. Uh, both signs have to be the same. Everything's positive, so positive, positive. So what factors of 8 add up to 9? Well, you can just stop at 1 and 8 because they add up to 9. So you have positive 1x and positive 8x. So I'm going to get 2x squared plus 8x plus 1x plus 4. I have a 2x I can factor out of both of those. That leaves me x plus 4. I can, that middle sign comes down. I can factor a 1 out. So those are the same. That's what you want. x plus 4, and then 2x plus 1. That's my answer. Oh, you remember the difference? Two squares. 
That's a perfect square because x times x is x squared, and that's a perfect square because 10 times 10. Remember this, it's just simply going to be x plus 10 and x minus 10. It's very quick and very simple. This is also a perfect square. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 5 times 5 is 25. It's separated by a subtraction sign. So 3x times 3x, 5 times 5, make sure you alternate the signs. One positive, one negative. Doesn't matter the order, just as long as there's one of each. Number 17. It looks like everything has a 4 out front. I could, I could pull that. That's going to give me 2x squared minus x minus 10. So that 4 is going to be part of the answer. Okay. We cannot, we don't even have to worry about it now. Let's just factor this. So I'm going to multiply those. I get negative 20. So if I get a negative 20, one's positive, one's negative. What factors of 20 give me negative 1? Well, you got 1 and 20, 2 and 10, uh, 4 and 5. I think 4 and 5 are going to work. So I'm going to have a negative 5x and a positive 4x because you want those to add up to the negative 1 and that worked. So I'm going to get 2x squared minus 5x plus 4x minus 10. Those have an x in common, so you have 2x minus 5 left over. Middle sign comes down. Factor a 2 out of both of those. That gives me 2x minus 5. So 2x minus 5, and whatever you have left, I have x plus 2 left, it goes right there. All done. Problem number 18, it looks like they are all divisible by 5. So you're going to bring a 5 out front, and that's going to leave you x squared plus 9x plus 10. So this 5 is going to come over here. It's going to be part of our answer. Okay, so now we're just going to deal with right here. So 10 times 1 is positive 10. And in order to multiply two numbers together, to get us and add two numbers together, to get that I have one and ten, and I also have. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. That should be a twenty. I'm so sorry. So that should be a twenty. So it's one and twenty, and then two and ten, and five and four. The five and four are going to work. So I'm going to get x squared plus four x plus five x plus 20. Remember the ends come down. I have an x in common there. Middle sign comes down. That's a positive. Factor of 5 out. x plus 4. So my answer is going to be x plus 4. Remember I have that 5 already there. That's great. And x plus 5 is my other one. That's my answer. These are now solving. Okay, they're solving because there's an equal sign. And remember you want it to equal 0 first. So on this first one, you're just going to take x squared equals 0, so x equals 0. That's one answer. And then x minus 9 equals 0, so x equals 9. Remember, you have to add it. And then x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 from both sides, so you get negative 5. There's my answers. Okay? So you need those three answers. circle wanted to come along. Remember, we want it equal to 0 first, so I'm going to bring the 35 over by adding it to both sides. Now it's equal to 0. Now we're going to go ahead and factor it just like we had. So I want positive 35. That means both signs have to be the same, but I have a negative there, so they're both negative. So 1 and 35 and 5 and 7. Do any of those, when they're both negative, add up to 12? The answer is yes, those do. So now I have negative 5x negative 7x that we're going to squeeze in there. So I'm going to get x squared minus 5x minus 7x plus 35. Factor it like normal. x comes out, so I have x minus 5. Middle sign comes down. Uh, 7 comes out, and I change the signs. So I get x minus 5 equals 0, and x minus 7 equals 0. Add 5 to both sides, so I get x equals 5. Add 7 to both sides, so I get x equals 7. Problem 21. This one looks a little bit goofy, but it looks like I can factor a 7x out of both, and that's going to leave me x plus 1. So then you go 7x equals 0, divide each side by 7, so x equals 0, there's one answer. And x plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1, so x equals negative 1.
There's my two answers. And the last question of the day. Okay, so I put a one out front, multiply those together, I get a positive 22. Uh, all the signs are positive, so both factors are positive. So I have 1 times 22. I also have 2 times 11. 2 and 11 will indeed add up to 13. That's what we want. So I'm going to make it a positive 2x and a positive 11x that I squeeze in for the 13x. So I get x squared, whatever order I want. Factor, I have an x, so that's x plus 2. Middle sign comes down. Factor out an 11, so that's x plus 2. So that means that x plus 2 is equal to 0, and x plus 11 equals 0. So the first one, you just subtract 2 from both sides. There's one answer. The second one, you subtract 11 from both sides. There's that answer. Okay, so we have gone through this. Have you taken notes? Do you need to go back to any part of this video and re-watch it? Take care of your education. Okay, some of you come in with these blank and that's, you get to use this on your test on Friday. So let's not do that, and let's not have that as a practice. Do the best you can. Come in on Thursday and ask questions about this as well. This is posted on a Wednesday. You have a Thursday to take a look at it. You will have this on Wednesday to work on. Talk to us during Thursday. Make sure you understand what we're doing. Make sure you have notes down on this that you can do. Heck, the entire back page is blank. You can add extra stuff to it if you needed extra examples. Take care of your education. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.